The title of this book is Going Home, The Mystery of Animal Migration by Marianne Burks, illustrated by Jennifer DeRubio. Going home, going home, we feel the urge to go. It's time for us to travel on. It's something we just know. Many of us look for food, others find a mate. And when the weather starts to change, there is no time to wait. Going home, going home, where I need to be. Somehow I will paddle on, swimming endlessly. From the ocean I will crawl up onto the shore, laying eggs on a beach where I've been before. Loggerhead turtles hatch from eggs that the mother buries on a sandy beach. They scurry into the ocean where they live for many years. When the female is ready to lay eggs, she usually swims back to the same beach where she was born. Going home, going home, dancing in the sky, waking from our winter sleep, it's time for us to fly. We rested in our family tree, filling every space, but now it's time to travel on and find another place. Monarch butterflies migrate south to keep warm when winter approaches. They rest closely together in a semi-dormant state. Often on the very same tree their ancestors occupied the year before. In spring, they fly north. Going home, going home, I can find my way. Navigating toward the coast where I used to stay. When it was cold, I had to move. I floated near the shore until I found a warm lagoon where I could eat some more. Manatees migrate as water temperature change. If the water is too cold, they will die. They often follow the same routes that their parents did, chewing on vegetation along the way. Going home, going home, I feel the time is near. I'm headed where I lay my eggs. I do it every year. I need to cross the wide blue sea, and then I'll eat my fill. Rapidly, I beat my wings and use my slender bill. A ruby-throated hummingbird. Traveling between their winter and summer homes make an amazing non-stop crossing over the Gulf of Mexico. When they reach land, they eagerly drink the sweet nectar from flowers for the energy they need to continue their journey. Going home, going home, swimming wild and free to rivers that are cool and clear from the salty sea. I leap, I splash, I charge upstream, swimming on and on. I have to reach my place of birth. It's where I go to spawn. Pacific salmon lay eggs in fresh water streams. The tiny fish swim toward the salty ocean, where they live for a few years until fully grown. Then they find the same river and battle their way upstream to the place of birth to lay their own eggs. Going home, going home, looking down below. The season's here, the path is clear, and we're all set to go. Honking high in the sky, flying in a V, we soar together in a flock saving energy. Canada geese fly together in a V formation which creates a current of air that makes it easier for them to fly. They honk loudly to each other, kind of like a buddy system. That way they keep track of each other without looking around.
Going home, going home, moving on our way, heading for some icy seas from a nice warm bay. Our babies swim beside us, staying close to shore, traveling up the coastline 5,000 miles or more. California gray whales spend the winter near California and northern Mexico. In spring, they start the long journey to cold northern waters where there is plenty to eat. The mothers stay close to the coast to protect their babies from killer whales. Going home, going home, listen to the sounds. Our thundering herd is setting out to our vast calving grounds. The journey spans 2,000 miles, but we were born to run. We're on the treeless tundra now and feel the Arctic sun. Caribou. Caribou gather in huge herds in winter in evergreen forests where there is some protection from the cold. In spring, they move northward to the tundra to feed on low-growing plants and to give birth to their young. Going home, going home, I have the longest way. I travel all around the globe to see the light of day. I'm always moving north and south. I really love to fly. I nest up in the Arctic and die for food supply. The Arctic Tern is the world champion migrator. It travels over 20,000 miles every year to live in sunshine. In June and July, it enjoys almost constant sunshine in the Arctic summer. In December and January, almost constant sunshine in the Antarctic summer. Going home, going home, I never use the sky. I flap my wings in water, and that is how I fly. My mate will keep our baby warm while I feed in the sea, and then I'll waddle miles on ice to find my family. Emperor penguins fly through the water, propelled by their flippers. They live mostly in water, but in winter they migrate inland onto ice, where the female lays a single egg. Then she goes back to the ocean to feed while the egg is kept warm by the male. Going home, going home, by land, by sky, by sea, our journey back from here to there is still a mystery. We have to move from place to place. You know the reasons now. Our genius is to know the way, and yours is to wonder how. The Mystery of Migration The rhyming verses you read in this story were told in the voice of the animals themselves. Of course, they don't talk, that is fiction, but their adventures and their migration routes are amazingly real, and that is nonfiction. Taken together, this kind of book is called creative nonfiction. Migration is usually a seasonal, lengthy journey from one place to another. Migrators do this to stay warm, raise their young, and find plenty of food and water. Sometimes it might take a lifetime to complete, such as for the Pacific salmon. Occasionally, it may take several lifetimes for a species to complete, as in the case of the monarch butterfly. Often these animals find their way instinctively to the very same spot, finding the same river or beach or tree, even though they had never been there before except when they were born. In the case of butterflies, only their ancestors had been there before. Imagine yourself being one of these animals. Why would you feel the urge to migrate? What would it take to travel on such long and dangerous journeys? What obstacles might you face? How would you find your way? These creatures hardly ever wander off course. Unlike humans, animals don't have maps or other navigational devices such as compasses or satellite systems or GPS. Could it be that they have navigational devices in their brains? 
Some scientists think so, but nobody is sure. Maybe you will be a scientist who solves the mystery or a writer who tells the real story. And here's some extra information about the animals that we read about today.